Okay, yeah, that's what they were saying. Because I'm I'm an honorary member. They made me an honorary member. I'm an honorary member also. So, uh, but, but I'm a beer drinker, so I told them that I have to watch myself. I'd rather have the beer. Okay, it's one o'clock. Shall we get started? Yes. <laughs> How many people made it? Yeah, 13 so far. 13! Logged in. Yep, I'm, I'm ready. Go ahead. Uh, Logged in, Tristan. And now I want to call this uh, uh, district convention to order. And I would have uh, uh, Lion Jason Radman lead us in the pledge. And following that, we'll have the opening prayer by our pastor here in town, Lion Pastor matt roberts and then I'll, I'll be back okay i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice for all can i have the first second and i just want to mention that uh flying jason radman is probably one of our newest citizens. He was originally from Canada and he did uh, become a citizen of the United States uh, about a year and a half ago. Thank him again for uh, leading us. We'll now proceed to the opening prayer. What? Somebody's asking a question. No. Oh, Gary's on. this time I want to welcome all that could attend today. Hopefully you will find this information and an information afternoon. Uh, the type of convention is new to all of us and we are all still learning. Making mistakes is one of the things I do very easily. This year we are celebrating the 75th anniversary of District 14L. Later on after uh, in the meeting I will report on what's happening in our different clubs and what our district has done to help with some of the projects and aid other states that have suffered disasters. Um, at this time, I would uh, introduce our, our uh, international uh, delegate uh, from Pennsylvania, uh, Lion and Independent, uh, yeah, Independent, he knows I can't say that right, and our international delegate, Larry director. Edwards. Or, international director. National director. I did that again. So. Anyhow, well, uh, Lion, Larry, take it away. Thank you, Governor Jim. Hey, I've been called lots of things. That's okay. You're, you're good. Don't worry about it. Like you said, we're all learning this process, and uh, if we don't make a few mistakes, uh, hey, we didn't do it right then. Well, it's my privilege and honor to uh, introduce uh, my good friend and his partner in service, uh, International Director uh, Bob and Brenda Block. Uh, got to uh, know uh, Bob and uh, Brenda when we were in Milan, Italy, which seemed like a lifetime ago now. 
uh, great people. Uh, they uh, come from the Midwest. You have uh, Director Bob's bio. I don't particularly want to read the whole bio for you, but I thought I would pinpoint a couple things here. Uh, first of all, uh, Director Bob joined Lions in 1974. How many else here has uh, been in Lions since 1974? Uh, there's probably one or two on the on the uh, 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 program here today, but not very many. Long time uh, Lion, that's for sure. Uh, I, I can say uh, we've had a lot of fun uh, with uh, Lion uh, Bob and Brenda. I think one of the things that he does, although we've never had the opportunity to try it, I understand he's a great cook, uh, does a lot of barbecues. We almost got to do one here about a year and a half ago, but we never quite made it. Uh, that's on our uh, bucket list to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, he comes from the uh, Calmet City Lions Club in <laughs> Illinois, but he lives right over the border in Indiana. So he kind of goes back and forth between, uh, between items. I think before maybe most of you were on and you heard him say that uh, he has been appointed, I guess, as the chairperson for the pin traders group there next year. This is exactly <laughs> why Lion Bob is such a great lion. He never says no. He volunteers all the time. If someone asks him, he does it. Uh, whether you knew it or not, I know there were some of us on the uh, call here today that uh, did get to Chicago for the International Convention. Director Bob was chair for that convention. I have to say, I didn't know him then, but what an awesome job uh, he and his committee did. I cannot imagine undertaking an international convention. Did a great job with that. Served as a uh, district governor in 1989, 1990. Uh, you name it, a job that he has been asked to do in Lyons, he's done it. He's had just about every position. Received a number of awards. Uh, serving on the board with me, we, we've been good, uh, good partners and good friends. So with that, I'm not going to say a whole lot more. I just introduce uh, Director Bob and uh, Lion uh, Brenda. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Larry, for those kind words. Uh, I like that introduction a lot better than the written one. Uh, uh, we have the written bio that everybody likes to read, and unfortunately, you you have it in front of you, and you can see uh, what it is all about. But to me, it's more of the friendships that we have with our alliance. Uh, it's good to see uh, Susan along with Larry. Uh, it's been a while since we've been together, and uh, hopefully we'll be together uh, shortly uh, at our board meeting in June. Uh, I thank the governor for inviting me. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we've had some uh, nice conversations. Uh, I did not burn dinner last night, so uh, you didn't bother me. So it was good talking to you while I was outside uh, barbecuing, but uh, uh, that's one of my passions that I enjoy doing. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank all the uh, Lions that have taken the time to be here today. I think this says a lot for what our organization is all about, about what lion, lionism is all about. <laughs> we take the special time to do this. Uh, I know here in Indiana, it's a rainy day. So yes, it's nice to be inside, but if it's nice and sunny, I know people would rather be outside doing yard work and, and starting to enjoy going out and uh, doing things. So but I, I thank you for that. I'd like to take a minute before I get started and talk a little about the virtual convention that's coming up uh, this year. It's something new for the Lions. Uh, as Larry says, we're bound to make mistakes, but we're trying our hardest to make it work uh, so we can have our international convention. Uh, we have extended the registration uh, early bird rate until the end of April. So there's still time to get in uh, on the registration for $50. Uh, I look at it as this is one of the great opportunities for Lions to attend an international convention. There is no reason why a lion cannot attend this convention. You don't have to travel. You don't have to go anywhere. You just have to turn on your screen and watch it at home in the comfort of your own house. Wow, where else can you do that today? I mean, we watch everything else on television. Why not attend a convention and see what our business that we do at a convention is about? So it's something that I encourage all the Lions to do. I encourage you to have view parties. Uh, we have a number of clubs that are going together and looking to do view parties to where they get a number of their club members together and have a little mini convention amongst themselves during that time. Uh, there is a reduced rate, for, as, as we call it, as a group rate. Uh, 
when you register, you just have to uh, get the extra form from Lions Clubs International, and uh, you can go as a group leader and uh, register. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind that if you are a voting delegate <clears throat> for your uh, club, you have to make sure you register your, yourself because all voting delegates have to be registered with the convention. And when you register, you have to furnish them with your uh, membership number and your um, fate or uh, email address so they can contact you when it's time to vote that they will be sending you a special ballot as well as a pin number that you have to use in order to, to cast your vote by email. So make sure you do that. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, we have extended the wave our new member and new club or uh, member fees until the end of the year. So I encourage you to go out there and we still have time to bring in uh, new clubs and members and take advantage of this. Uh, I congratulate your district on your 75th anniversary. Uh, I'm finding a lot of districts are uh, having major celebrations this year, which is nice to see. But unfortunately, we can't be there in person to do it. And so this is, I guess, the next best thing uh, to not doing anything at all is being together and at least looking at the lines that we haven't seen for a while. And that's, that's the best part. I bring you greetings from our international president, Choi, the other fellow directors, uh, my home club, the Calumet City Lions Club, as well as the Lions of Illinois. This year, our president is talking about united in kindness and diversity. He's asking us to take a minute or two to reflect on what that means for us as Lions, how we come together as one with the same common goal of the diversity that we have in our clubs and in our membership in our districts, as well as the kindness that we show in doing those services. These are the two unique things that Lions has to offer as an organization for us. And we as Lions have that part of our uh, integrity of what we like to do. We also show that we can work together. We all come from different backgrounds and that, but as a group, we can work together for the same goal to help our communities to do things that others can't do for themselves, but we can do by helping them. We show that every day when we're out there, when we're helping those communities doing those service projects. One of our strongest strengths is our diversity. Again, we are different people, different makeups. Just look on the screens, the different people that are on here today. That is an example of what Lionism is about around the world. We all come, all our clubs are different in makeup. Some are business, some are professional, some are um, hard workers, farmers. Uh, you got all kinds of members. We bring some, those clubs bring something different to your district as well as something district to the, each other in that area. Our members are unique. We all bring something different to the table, a different talent, a different experience. My talent has to be, I, I enjoy putting things together. I'm an engineer by trade. So I like to design things. I like to see, make the plan, make the plan work and see if we can carry it out. So everybody has a different skill. You may be one that would like to make pancakes. Guess what? You have that opportunity or a fish fryer. You know, you may be a, a, a lawyer during the day, but when you become a line, you could be a pancake flipper instead and enjoy that. Do something different in your in your career. Resume. So that's something that you want to look at as lions. Each member, as I said, is unique. We all have different talents. We all have different backgrounds different cultures, different experiences, but we all have that common thread of kindness, the kindness that we show in what we do for others. It's in the lion's DNA. It is shown through our service that we do in the community. But being together is the most important thing. We are united with these two special traits of diversity and kindness. So how can we lose by having those traits and working together? We can't. We cannot lose as a group or an organization. We are there to help make life less stressful for
for those that are seeking our help. But it, it's not that easy when you talk about it because a lot of those people will not come and openly talk to us about it. We have to go out and look for it. We have to search for that. So we have to listen to what the community is talking about, what their service is they're looking for and what they need and how can we as Lions fulfill those needs. It goes back to what was said back in 2017 about where there is a need, there is a lion. How true is that statement? That is very true about what we are today. We are involved in a variety of areas in our, our community, the welfare, the economics, the actual on everyday living. There's everything from health to natural disaster that the Lions are involved in. In, 19, in, in 2018 at our international convention, our international foundation put a challenge in front of the Lions. They launched a three-year campaign to raise over $300 million for Campaign 100. The goal is close. We're today, we're at $199 million or 89% of that, of that goal. And in the United States, we are more than 80% towards our goal of $35 million. I invite you to be tomorrow Tomorrow we have a telethon that's hosted by our Vice President, uh, Doug Alexander. It's gonna be on YouTube. You don't have to leave your house. You can go on YouTube and watch it. Uh, go in for 20 minutes or whatever. It's tomorrow afternoon from five to nine Eastern time. So it's the same time zone as yours. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier for you to remember. I have to remember I'm an hour behind. So I have to make sure I dial in at the right time. But I think it's a good time to see what else is out there, what the lines are doing at this telethon. There's gonna be entertainment. There's gonna be uh, talk about what LCIF does, give you more of a better example of what is done around the world. It's ironic that if you look at that, their goal was to have uh, a goal of $20, $25,000 in the kitty. Right now, as of this morning, they're at $28,000. They have exceeded that goal. I know the Lions have always exceeded the goal that we have. And we have one more year to raise another million dollars for Campaign 100. And I know the Lions will exceed that number when we're all done. So I ask you to please keep supporting it. We need all the help we can. Again, if every Lion would give $1, just think we could make that goal in one day. But I know that's not possible, but think about it how easy it is to do. Just, you know, as they say, $5 is a, is a McDonald large Coke. Give that up for a day and you can have, have uh, the money there to be able to support it. So why do we do Campaign 100? Campaign 100 there is to help us to expand our commitment, our commitment to not only to our own communities, but the communities of the world. We'd, we'd like to stay and give a, bit, a bigger uh, impact into the global needs that we see in vision, in our youth, disasters, hunger, uh, childhood cancer and diabetes, the environment and humanitarian efforts. Those are all the areas that LCF works in. You have seen it in your own district, some of the, the good that comes from that, from getting grants to help you with your projects. And just think about it, if we can give back just a couple dollars more we can keep our program going. The other thing behind the Campaign 100 is to help the Lions realize that we have to continue to support LCIF. We cannot just stop when we reach our goal. We want to keep on going. And so I applaud you for what you have done up to date as far as your contribution to it. And I also ask you to please continue con supporting our foundation so we do have the funds there to help other districts out when they're looking for something for their community or something that can help them. It's ironic that Melvin Jones in 1917 called together 22 businessmen in Chicago from nine different organizations. Just think about it. He had that vision a hundred years ago of kindness. He talked about the service that they can do for others. He had the thing about diversity he talked, he went to nine different organizations, brought them together as a group, different businessmen as well, 
And then he summed it up by putting them all together and saying, we can accomplish more working together than one of us can do by themselves. Wow, what an idea 100 years ago to come up with that. We have that right now, 100 years later, we are the largest service organization in the world. We have 1.4 million members and 48,000 clubs that are located throughout the world. We have a strong tradition that was created by our founder, Melvin Jones, as well as the lions and the people that have served and followed him, not only around the world, but in our own clubs and our own districts. Guess what? It's our turn. It's our turn as lions to move on, to make our that tradition to carry on into the next 100 years of service. With that in mind, we have to think about it is that things have changed over that. So we have to be ready for change. We have to be ready to carry on our tradition, but it's not going to be in the same manner that we're doing it today. Lions Clubs International has continued to change to see how we can attract new members, young members, female members. We have figured ways of how we can better our service to those members that we bring in. And we, yes, and we want to get the young and female members involved in our leadership programs that have been dominated over the years by our male lions. Now it's their turn, the younger lions to move in and the female lions to come in and start taking some of the leadership roles. Through those, through the development and redevelopment of existing programs, the Lions have looked at rejuvenating their clubs. We have the, non, the North American Membership Initiative, Voices, the Global Action Team. They're the things that have been there for years, but they're being retooled to help us work in changing to carry our tradition on for another year. Through those programs, we're encouraging new members. Again, rejuvenating our club's membership that we have today and rejuvenate our own districts by bringing in new clubs and helping the clubs that are hurting and seeing if we can get them to grow. We wanna develop new leaders, encourage leaders from your club. Everybody that's aligned has a leadership quality in their blood. It's the matter of pulling it out and getting them to accept that leadership role. They may not wanna do it today, but sometime hopefully in their career as a lion, they will accept that leadership role. We have to look outside of our comfort box. It is time for us to start looking in our community, asking the questions to our community, what can we do for you? We are going through this pandemic that has created change for us as an organization, big change for us. We have found new ways of holding club meetings, district conventions, and other things throughout the year through the virtual avenues that have been open or have been in existence that we have really not taken advantage of. We've learned how to conduct fundraisers. We have taken our traditional pancake breakfast and made it into a drive-through. Wow, what an idea. McDonald's, Burger King, a success that they've had. And talking to clubs that have done that, they're finding they make more money with the drive-through than they do with the in-person dinners. So think about it if you haven't done it for your club. Something to think about. Communications. Communications today is not by the, the mail, it's by Facebook, it's by the internet, as well as our recruiting. Just think about it. If you have a Zoom meeting, why not invite your chamber to be with you for your club meeting? They may find that they may have an interest in your club, or you may find one of them being interested in a service project that you can involve them and you as a Lions Club to lead that project. You have to remember when we're doing all this new stuff, we have to think about those that we have today. We all have members in our clubs that are not computer, computer oriented as we are. There are some that are afraid of it, some that will not participate in it, or some that does not have the capability to be able to have the reception at their residence or wherever in their community. So we need to go back to those members and talk to them personally. Pick up the phone, dial it, ask them how they're doing. Ask them if they need something. 
we have to take care of our members we have today. Those members we have today are our foundation for the future. If we don't take care of our foundation, it's like building a house. You have to support the structure up above you. If we don't have the lions that are there today, how are we gonna get our structure to maintain as an organization and as a group? So I ask you to please go back to your members, call them up, make sure everything is good with them. See if they need something and, and welcome. As you bring in new members, the hard part is welcoming them into your club and accepting those new ideas. Please accept them. If we're not willing to make these changes or be able to make new things happen, then we as an organization are gonna die and we don't wanna do that. We have that 100 year tradition and reputation we wanna keep going. So I thank you for everything you've done. As I looked through my paperwork and read different things, I found a, an article that I thought was very fitting for what I feel Lions is all about. And I'd like to take a minute and, and read it to you and let you think about it and see what you think. And it goes as this, at the end of the day, it is not about what you have or even what you have accomplished. It is about who you have lifted up who you have made better. It's about what you have given back and not about what's in it for me. Isn't that what Lion is all about? We work together. We work on projects together. We look to help others. And at the same time, we don't worry about what is it in for us. That's the important word. What is it about us that is so special? We don't care about what we're gonna get out of it. We're gonna get, for our reward, we get that thank you letter, we get that thank you card that's handwritten by that person that we help. The biggest thank you I see is when I see that smile on the person's face, the senior citizen that we helped or the baby or the child that we had the eye exam for and the parent that found out that their child may have an eye disease that is curable and something that we could take care of right away. So those are our rewards. I challenge you. I challenge each one of you to go back to your community, look for those new opportunities, get those new lions, look for those new people to help join your club. I thank you for the support that you have done over the years for LCIF. Again, it's through the lions as a whole how we can keep our service going for others throughout the world and not only in our own community. On behalf of those that you have helped in your community, as well as around the world that you have never met, never see or heard about, I thank you for that, for your assistance. Because again, we are there to help as an organization. Please remember, you chose to be a lion, you chose to do that project and that you did not have to do it. At all times, have a smile on your face and always have fun in what you do. That is the important thing is have fun. And I thank you for the opportunity to be part of your convention today. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. I want to thank him very much for that presentation. Later on in the program, uh, he wants to talk to the members and any questions that you have and you want to direct towards him, uh, he's pretty much prepared to answer them. So uh, <laughs> we can we can go at him. So have have fun doing it. Um, some Thank you, things. Governor. I also have uh, my help with me, so I'll, I'll drag Larry in with me on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, we're going to move on to the business part of the meeting here real quick. Uh, I do have to say that the nomination of the district governor elect <clears throat> was done two years ago by uh, past district governor uh, uh, Leanne uh, Calhoun and followed by her uh, husband who did the seconding. But this year uh, we did have uh, Don Sylvester, who is a member of the Everett Club, nominate um, uh, Gary for the position of district governor. 
and that was seconded by Mark Rakowski, I think is how it said. And uh, I need to tell you that the, the voting will remain open until three o'clock. And then after that, we will, we will announce the, uh, the winner. We know who, who, we hope that we know who it will be. And then we'll give Gary about five minutes to talk. Doesn't he get five? He gets, he gets two. Right. What's he, that? He gets, he gets his nomination speech now. Yes. Oh, he does? He gets yes. two to five minutes. No, no, they've, it's already been written in, so we don't. So do we call on Gary right now? Yes. Gary, uh, you're on. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Good. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody. Thanks for attending. Thanks for having me. Um, I've done a little acceptance speech, so um, hopefully that's acceptable. But uh, I'd like to accept Lion, Dawn, and Mark's nomination to be district governor for District 14L for the Lions year 2021 through 2022. If elected, I understand and appreciate the acceptance of the Lions of District 14L in electing me to this important position. I look forward to serving and will do my best to satisfy the requirements of this position. With the past year behind us, I also look forward to meeting many new Lions in person. I anticipate more and more face-to-face -face interaction as the grip of the pandemic subsides. A few of the district goals I'm considering are dehydration and hunger. Too many of our fellow citizens struggle with these two needs. I would also like to see us interact more with and enlist more young people in our organization. Youth is key to our future and we need to work on getting more young people involved and make them members. I would also like to make Lions fun. I listen to stories from longtime Lions talking about neckties getting cut, banners stolen, and just more interaction with other clubs. Let's get those tail twisters active again and have some fun. Again, um, I just really appreciate this opportunity and I'm looking forward to my year as district governor for, for, for District 14 L. Thank you. Gary. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> we will uh, uh, move on now to reports from uh, LCIF, uh, Lion Jason Radman. He has a few things he'd like to cover and we'll welcome him on now. Thanks, DG Jim. Um, I just, as the LCIF coordinator for 14L, I just wanted to give a quick update. Um, the campaign 100 fundraising goal for 14L was $192,454. So far, as of the 1st of March, the district has only raised 33,182, so 17% of our goal. We need to get the word out to see if some of the clubs can come up with any sort of money to donate. I know it's a tough year with the pandemic and, pandemic and everything else, but we need to try as much as possible. The other two things I'd like to bring up, there are a couple of ongoing fundraisers. First, for those of us in the district who know ID Larry, and those of us who know past it, past International Director Jim Cavallaro, they are running a save, Shave the Stashes campaign. If they raise $10,000, both of them will shave their mustaches off, which they have been growing for over 20 years. It would be very interesting to see ID Larry without his mustache, I'll tell you that. They are also giving away Melvin Jones to people who donate, they're having draws for that. So hopefully you're doing well, Larry, with that. The second one is I am personally running a LCIF fundraiser and it is a basket with Pittsburgh sports teams autographed memorabilia. It's got autographed pucks, autographed jerseys, autographed baseballs, and other small items. And those, those tickets are five bucks a piece. Um, the tickets for Larry and 
PID gyms are $25 a piece. And you can get tickets for that from District Governor Jim. He has tickets for both. And you can get them from ID Larry. You like to add, Larry? Hi, Jason. I just want to share. Uh, last time we checked uh, last week, we we're just about at $7,500 of the 10000 So we're hoping we get the uh, last month or so push here. Yeah, mine is mine. I think I have 60 tickets left of the 200. So let's get out there and do some work for LCIF. I'll hand it back over to Jim. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Lion, uh, Jason. <clears throat> I'll now call it is in uh, past district governor Anna Clark. Do you have a report on, on membership? Yes, I do. Good afternoon, uh, ID Larry Edwards, ID Robert Block, and District Governor Jim, and Vice District Governor Gary, Lyons, and Guest. Some of our clubs have resumed holding their meetings and also doing activities within their communities. Uh, we are looking forward to the time that we can all be together and enjoy that fellowship that we've been so used to. Since the beginning of July of 2020 to the end of March of 2021, we have 70 members that we have dropped. 83 of those, uh, no, I'm sorry, we have added 70 members, but we have dropped 83 members. Uh, eight of them have been due to non-attendance at meetings, 16 due to non-attendance and not paying of their dues, 27 just resigned for whatever reason, four moved, two transferred, four it just says others, we have no, I have no idea what those were, and then we have 20 that we have lost in our district this year. So our membership right now is standing at 965. We are all aware that membership is a challenge this time of the year, but we still need to ask one person to come and join our clubs. If every lion does that, we could have 1,030 members. I think I'd just be terrific. <laughs> Keep working. And thank you for all your service. Thank you, Ann. And uh, now call uh, past district governor, Amos Shetner. Does he have a report for uh, service? Amos, are you there? He's muted. I'm muted. He's, he, Amos, I think you're muted. Is he talking? No, just yeah. give him a second. Well, well, we'll come back to Amos. Uh, past right. there, he is. there he is. Okay. Good afternoon, my fellow Lions. Uh, this year has been a challenge to all of our clubs. Uh, one of the, I look back over many of the service projects that the clubs were able to do this year, and I think we can basically summarize it up by saying we've done a lot of assisting of our community charitable organizations. We have helped with the distribution of free foods. Uh, we have helped the distribution of food boxes. We're helping our neighbors. Uh, we're driving, uh, drive, delivering food to the elderly, shoveling snow, helping out at our local food banks, working at the World Hunger Canning Project. Uh, we drive patients to the hospitals and the doctors. We are ringing uh, the bell to the Salvation Army. And we had a, uh, a project where we uh, prepared and mailed uh, boxes out to our soldiers. Uh, we served meals to our veterans, helped at our blood banks, and collected clothing for our needy. Uh, Lion Jim, that is my report on our service project. Thank you very much, Amos. Uh, I'll ask Gerald Chapman, past District Governor Gerald Chapman, do you have any report? Hey, 
Mm -hmm. I think it's a square, but no, it's not. Uh, uh, past district governor, Dennis Clark, do you have any report? No, I do not. Wasn't prepared for one. Thank you. No, okay, thank you. And I will now move on to, um, necrology. we want to enter now into the necrology and it'll be done uh, by uh, our uh, pastor from the uh, Williamsburg Lion Pastor Matt Roberts and we need to get it keyed up and we'll have it here in just a second. Come on, Owen. can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. To... I didn't mute myself, but I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have uh, the Leos and the school system has been pretty well shut down. There's no access, no activity. <clears throat> the disaster fund, we've had a few uh, requests, but uh, that's been fairly inactive too. I did have a question on uh, whenever Pastor Governor Anna was doing her report on membership, it said clubs were dropping numbers for non-attendance. I find it hard to believe I why some club would uh, drop someone during this pandemic for non-attendance, because we have some members in our club that are, I shouldn't use the term, but they're highly phobic and they don't want to even come out of their house. But to drop members, I, I would hope that there would be some leniency or some way for those folks to maintain their membership during this pandemic. I agree with you. Yeah, the, the, um, uh, actually, there's some of the rules pertain to that uh, non attendance uh, is not a reason for disqualification anymore. And uh, uh, I think that changed a few years ago. So we don't even consider that now. Some people cannot make anything that you're doing. We ask them to, and if they can come out and do anything, fine, but we would never drop a person for not attending a meeting or helping out because we we need them as members because their, their existence in the Lions organization might just have, teach somebody this, hey, that's a pretty good organization. I'd like to, I'd like to join it. So those are just my words on there, so. Well, I think some of the clubs have had the same secretary forever. I think they're still using the same rules they learned when they come into the job and times have changed and there's other rules. So I know Pastor Governor Fred has tried to hold training sessions for secretaries, but there again, participation has to be, uh, I don't know how you get to my, Uh, I'll go back in my cage now. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a couple of minutes, you'll see why I laughed when you said cage, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, we will now try to get to the necrology. Yep, we can kind of see it. Maybe see it. Oh, there it is. Has we got it? Yep. Are you going to see him this yes. time or is he going to be frozen? Today we gather for our District 14 L meeting to mourn the loss of our members that we have lost in the years of 2019 to 2020, to 2020 to 2021. It is right and just to mourn the loss of our brothers and sisters. But let us take peace in knowing that we have everlasting rights through Jesus Christ. Let us celebrate the lives that they have lived as mine. Let us carry on the legacy of each passing member that left behind. May we stand resolute on the ground that they have walked before us to serve our fellow man. Now join me as I recite the names of the members that we have lost during 2019 and 2020. Vera A. Down. 
Richard D. Fisher. Ply A. Buckheimer. K. Noble. Harvey B. Reader. Donald Gracie. He didn't sign on to any me. Sheldon W. Weingartner. He couldn't have played it in the Walter G. Hess. John M. Taylor. Richard Figuerella. Daniel W. Hoffman. Homer M. Lafferty. Naomi C. Jarrett. We need it. C. J. McGarvey. join me as I announce the names that we have lost from the year 2020 to 2021. McClellan Rudder. Donald P. E. Mills. Greg Clugston. Larry Moore. Donald Legal. Max oh, E. Fisher. <clears throat> Gerald R. Beats. <clears throat> David Coral. Charles B. Hauser. Harold L. Cameron, Glenn E. Huff, Burke Alvin Bowman, James Petro, Brighton Bowman. Barry L. Leonard, Richard J. Kajewski, Fred N. Eimler, Charles F. Smith, Thomas S. Carlson, Bert Alvin Bowen. Now join me in a moment of silence. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkness, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the legacies of our fallen brothers and sisters. We ask for strength to carry on the torch 
that they have passed. Bring peace to our hearts as we mourn the loss of our fallen. We have peace in knowing that your son, Jesus, offers us everlasting life in heaven because he paid for our salvation. Let us celebrate the lives of our fallen by serving others with kindness in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, I know that, that can get emotional for some people because the people that have passed, a lot of them I have met and a lot of them I just I'd like to extend my uh, appreciation for everything that they have done and we'll continue to model ourselves into those people that did the job for us before. And uh, now I'm going to uh, ask the uh, international director, Bob Block, to uh, help me with the next part of it. It is going to be the uh, the certificates and the medals. And uh, Bob, you uh, you have a list of them, and I have the certificates and the medals here. Anyone that gets a certificate or a medal, it'll be in the mail tomorrow. They were shipped here. We were trying to figure out how to do it. I couldn't get it. Uh, we will show the um, the certificate after he calls the name and uh, Lion uh, Treasure will hand us certificates. And yeah, the, aren't you supposed to do these first? No. And go down in that order? Do these first. Governor, which ones do you want to start with? Well, we'll, we'll start with the... Uh, do the ones Bob blocks. I uh, the certificates for the uh, uh, membership. we do the membership first? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have certificates from our, uh, these are awards that were earned, presidential awards that were earned for our uh, uh, beginning of the year membership drive. Uh, so uh, in relationship to the NAMI program. Uh, so I have a certificate of appreciation to our NAMI, your nominee, NAMI chairman, past sister governor, Anna Clark. Do uh, you have a Mr. governor? Yeah, hold on one second. Uh, uh, you want me to? I could read what it says on the certificate. Hold it up. Yeah, right there. There's a certificate of it's a certificate of appreciation awarded to, and in this case, it's going to pass uh, District Governor Anna Clark in recognition of distinguished achievements in fulfilling the mission of the Lions Clubs International to affirm the appreciation and gratitude of the association. I have hereunto affix my signature during this Lions year, 2020-2021, Dr. Young Yol Choi, International President, 2020-2021. Uh, and on the bottom of it says, United in Kindness and Diversity. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Governor. Thank you. She's not here. And the other one we have is for past district governor Lena Calhoun. Leanne. Leanne Calhoun, I'm sorry. I don't know if she's present or not, but uh, congratulations no, to her as well. Uh, that that certificate is is basically the fourth highest award that is given out by Lions Clubs International to its members. I have the privilege right now to hand out two uh, medals that were earned uh, also in regards to the NAMI program. And that's for the forming of your new club, uh, which is the Lion, Linus Club. So that's, that's great to see that. Uh, that again, that is uh, uh, one of the new avenues for the Lions to, to grow as far as bringing the Linus over. Unfortunately, we're losing that program and uh, hopefully we can get everybody converted over to become a lion. Uh, but in recognition for the work that was done on converting the, was it the Bed Bedford? Bedford Lion Linus Lions Club. Uh, I like to, uh, the first medal goes to international, I mean, I'm sorry, 
I've already raised you up, but already higher, immediate past district governor, John Harker. Uh, and John, congratulations. He's not here. See him? Yep. That is the leadership medal. Uh, that, that, is, that is the third highest honor that is given to a lion uh, from Lions Clubs International. And the other one goes to an unknown person in your district who's been very <laughs> hard at work, very hard at work this year. And that's your district governor, Jim Forrest. Fariso. Lion, Lion Jim, congratulations. Wow. And uh, do we want to go to the International Director Award, Bob? Well, if you want to continue on, we can. Huh? Do your local ones first, the International Director ones. Are well, you want to do your local ones in the district first, and then we can come yeah, back to yeah, this? I can do that. Um, the District Governor Certificate of Appreciation will be handed out at uh, at my appreciation get together. So I, don't, I won't cover that. Uh, the district peace poster award is uh, Janet Mills on? No. No, she's not on she here. Who it was. Um, we have the uh, Legrand W. Pierce Outstanding Service Award. And that's just sitting there. I picked it up. I'm sorry. Okay, now. Um, Oh, okay. They won't have the award to us till later on in the week, uh, but we are presenting it to a, a lion, which well, is also a president of a club, uh, Patricia Radman. She is a recipient of the Legrand Pierce Outstanding Service Award, and he was very happy that we uh, nominated her and that she got picked. Like I said, is they don't have the award ready yet, and that will be done uh, later on in uh, in a, before the end of the year, not end of the year, the end of our uh, of my term. <laughs> uh, the next one, uh, you're going to have to help me on this one, Bob. It's a PI, okay, PIP Joseph L. Wobolewski Award. You have that information, don't you, Bob? Um. No, I do not. Lion, it. You want Lion Larry, can you help me out here? Or? Yeah, I can help you out. Uh, I did not, you did not this, just send me that. Oh, I, yeah, I'm just looking at the sheet. It's not on there. Uh, <laughs> this is an award that is uh, given in honor of our uh, past international president, Joseph Borbaleski. And I never do say his name right. Um, I, uh, I understand he's kind of a beacon that you all follow because he done it right and done it right the first time. Well, this year it is being awarded to an international director uh, from 14G and his name is Larry Edwards. Well, Governor uh, Jim, uh, that surprises me completely. Uh, I thank you all from 14L uh, I'm kind of uh, that guy that's uh, traded over the border, though. But thank you so much for the recognition. And it doesn't matter how long I'm a member in 14G, 14L is still home. So uh, thank you so much. I, I just uh, kind of surprised by the recognition. Thanks very much. Yeah. Don't have it yet. Well, but you need to announce it. Now, we will we'll also have later on uh, in my term the Carl Shoemaker Award and uh, a Melvin Jones Award. But at this time, it, I would like to say that uh, if you have a man that, that can answer a question, I think you can always call on our uh, international uh, director, Larry. Uh, we've formed a good friendship and I appreciate it. And I know he's not gonna believe us, but his wife has known about this for a little bit. I'm glad she kept the secret to you, but it's something you really truly deserved, and I want to compliment you on that. All right, we're well, moving on along. Can you announce their names? I don't have them yet. They haven't picked one yet. Oh, okay. Do the uh, certificates now. Uh, backtrack to the international 
certificates, Governor? Yeah. Yes, yes. And they are. Um, are you ready to go? Yes. All right. I'm going to go off your email that you sent me last night. We'll go in that order to make it easy for everybody. Yeah, hold on one minute. She had okay. <laughs> here you are. I took them out of the. Hold on one minute till I locate them here. Um, no problem. They were in the white envelope. Oh, there's um, they're in the box. You took a bunch out. You took them all out. What box? <laughs> My white box. Y'all take a break. And we'll be back in a minute. They're they're in a the certificate. Nope. A white box. Give me a well, the white box is right there. Okay, let's just get back to this. Due to diff, uh, technical difficulties, I cannot find where I put them. Well, that's okay. I had them here. And uh, at, at this time, uh, go ahead, uh, International Director Bob. All righty. Uh, we do have certificates for you. Your governor has them. If not, I will replace them for them, and we'll get them in the mail to you. <laughs> so don't worry about it, Governor. Right now, we can we can uh, we'll go hey, on. Hey, wait, hold on a second. Uh oh, we got them. There they are. See, they were there all the time. Yeah. Don't feel bad. You know, my you know, area. This is the second time that I, I was uh, had the honor of being a, a district governor. And I had it the first time and it didn't do a good enough job. So they brought me back a second time and it doesn't look like I did it right this time either. So uh, we're uh, ready to go. Let me let me start your campaign for the third time around. No, no, no. no. They're, passing no. they're passing that rule. No more dupes. Divorce is on the table. <laughs> hey, third time's the charm, as they say, you know, as as a director, Larry and me are getting to serve three years as directors, and that's Unusual for international. So, did you didn't hear the comment about the divorces on the table when that happened? <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> I worked my way through it. Well, Bob, I'll tell you a real quick story before we get there. I was married probably 15 years and was very involved with the church. And one day, the uh, bishops of both jurisdictions in Virginia showed up at my house only because my home association had tennis courts. They wanted to play tennis. But they also brought Julie over a big golden boot. And the boot was for holding them umbrellas. And the bishop looked at it. She goes, what is this for? He says, you put it on and you kick your husband in the butt if he's going to run for a third term. So <laughs> that, applies, that applies to this one too. So uh -oh. we're ready. We're, we're ready. Very good story. Very good story. I just have to add a little to that for my own. Um, Brenda and me will be married 45 years in, uh, in May. And I was a lion before I was, uh, before I got married. So she, she knew what she was getting into. So, you know, she can't hold much there, but she's been very supportive over the years. So to carry on there, uh, I have the honor I've asked your uh, district governor for name for three names uh, that he would like to recognize Lions for outstanding things that they have done for him this year. Uh, again, this has been a challenging year, uh, not only for the district governors and the clubs, but also for your international board and directors, uh, because we all have been meeting virtually. And uh, as you know, things all a lot of times don't get done the way you would like to, but uh, we do get the work done. So at this time, I'd like to make a presentation for a certificate of appreciation to Lion Lyndon Wagner, who was the uh, first president of the new club of the Benford Linus Lions Club. Lion Linda, congratulations. Now this will be delivered to the Bedford 
club uh, on Tuesday night. We're, we're doing the official visit of the governor. Very good. Thank Very you, good, Governor. Give, give them our regards to and our congratulations, please. Yes. Uh, the next one is for a lion that I have met through the mail and through emails and have never seen him personally. But we've talked a lot of times. Uh, I know he has a passion for pins. Uh, he does a lot of work for your district. Uh, he's always there. He's acting this year as your uh, district administrator. Mm -hmm. And that is past district governor Amos Schatz Schatzer. Past district governor Amos, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amos. For Amos. All. Huh? Is it Amos on? Can't you flip to him and let him say thank you? You want to say a few words, Amos? We can't hear you. Yeah, we're going to see if we can get him on. Uh, we know he's here. So. I see him. There you go. Thank you very much. Oh, there he is. I had to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you Amos. I, you appreciate, have no, you have... I appreciate it very much, and I hope you had a good time in Iowa last weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We had fun. We had fun. Yes. And, um, are you going to be in Cincinnati for the offsite? Uh, no, no, unfortunately, I'll be in uh, North Carolina. I have a visit in North oh, Carolina sorry. that week. Sorry to miss you. Okay. And thank you, Amos. Go ahead, Go ahead Bob. Okay, the next one is for uh, a very active lion. Uh, he is uh, very uh, helpful in putting this program together today as far as your your chairman for your convention, as well as doing your uh, technical inter internet work uh, throughout the district. And that goes to Lion Jason uh, Rad Rad Radman. Radman. Yep. Radman. Radman. Can you flip your name? Thank, Thank you very much. much. Congratulations, Jason. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, um, I also have one one extra one uh, oh, yeah. that I that I do on my own. Uh, this is in honor of my wife, uh, Brenda, who has served our district five times as cabinet secretary and two times for myself that I served as cabinet secretary. Uh, the cabinet secretary is a very instrumental line in your district. Uh, it keeps in contact with Lions Clubs International and they're very helpful for the governor and it's an unsung hero, if you want to call it that, uh, for your district. So at this time, I would like to honor your cabinet secretary, treasurer, Lion David Smith. Congratulations. Oh, great. Well, you kept that a secret because I don't even have it on any paper from you. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Well, <laughs> that's, the, that's one of my prerogatives I have. I can honor a, a lion of that I would like to honor. So I, I always feel that's the important lion for every district is, is that secretary, as well as for the club. What's this? And uh, I also want to, do you have your list of the, the envelope you sent me for the governor, for the secretary treasurer? I don't, I don't really have, have the list, but those are the envelopes that I sent you? Yes. Uh, those are those are gifts that I I sent to the district governor. Uh, he's got a, a little uh, thank you uh, gift from uh, myself and Brenda. Uh, you can see, I think Lion Julia is showing the the pin that I have for the um, vice governor, vice governor, uh, your immediate past governor, your cabinet secretary, treasurer, uh, the district governor. Uh, you also have a special one there, uh, Governor, and that's uh, for you to uh, right. pass on to whoever you would like to. Uh, feel free to give it to a line that you would like to uh, have one of those, as well as for your uh, incoming second vice district governor, right? whoever is elected. Uh, something else in the box, I also included my personal pin uh, as well as this is something that I came up with with the stress block. Uh, 
You just got to the block. Yeah, I just got it. Oh. It's a stress block. He's a little <laughs> slow sometimes. And, 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 and the reason behind it is that when I did the international convention, they gave me a lion that was a stress lion. Yeah. And within 10 minutes, I had two legs ripped off of it. So they decided <laughs> that if I use a block, I won't rip it as bad. <laughs> but he, the governor has a couple of these to pass out in your district. Uh, I would hope they would at least give one, keep one for himself for the rest of the year and pass one on to his cabinet secretary. And then the other ones, governor, it's up to you who you, who you like to give it to. But again, just a little something from me to you uh, that uh, we'd like to share our uh, time with you and wish, you were, wish we were there with you in person. And, and uh, I know that you said you're a beer drinker and uh, we got a case of it or Stella Doro or whatever it is you're, you're called. And I gave, I gave it to Larry and uh, <laughs> all he had left was the lids. So <laughs> to tell you that it was really great. So, okay. I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, uh, Lion Larry did not know I was going to say that, but he. <laughs> hey, it's pretty tough to beat Stella. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had some last night, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, he didn't say. Oh, me or Larry? No, I didn't. They didn't have it. No, no, you uh, international. I, had some, I was drinking, you know, I had Miller last night. I was on Miller Life last night. Okay. I need, I need to ask you, I've asked you three times and you haven't answered. What type of pasta did you have last night? To me, it, it makes a difference. Pasta? Pasta. What kind of pasta? Oh, it was. Um, I don't know. Brenda was the pasta maker. It was. Like chicken Alfredo pasta. Oh, yeah. No, he uh, just wants to know the kind of noodle. Was it fettuccine? <laughs> was it spaghetti? Was it capoletti? It's very important to him. There's a difference. See, there Alfredo a, noodles. There is a big difference in my wife. And like my the family. fettuccine noodles. They just don't understand. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll move along. Uh, what do we got next here? He's pulling up. We gave those closing comments. Oh, want to give got, their gifts. Oh, now I want to turn uh, the uh, four back over to our international director. Uh, he has requested that, hey, uh, I'm here to answer any questions that they have. And at this time, the, the floor is open. If someone's got a question, just let us know. We'll to put you on and you can ask your question. And just unmute and then go ahead. Just unmute it and you can answer the question. You're afraid. Are you ready? So, I, ID Bob, which uh, which um, pin swap are you chairing next year? Uh, next year, I'm chairing the Midwest uh, pin swap. It's going to be the first week of April in uh, Moline, you? Illinois. Oh, okay. ID Bob. Yes. What what is the organization as a whole doing to help encourage younger? members when i say younger i mean into that just getting out of college age right right now we're uh as they say we have the waiver on our initial uh membership fee as far as bringing them in there uh they're also looking at uh and we are part of already what they call the, the family club units yeah, the branch clubs. Uh, where we bring the uh a family together and you have a a compound or one dues uh, for the family as opposed to individual. So it's like a couple dues as long as they live in your household. Uh, they are part of uh, your family. So your uh, international dues would be uh, changed a little. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, we're encouraging clubs to look at families and, and convert over to a family, and bring the whole family together as a, as, as a one unit. And then uh, during your meeting after dinner, say separate and then have the, uh, the kids go to one area to do a service project. And then the other one uh, where the adults would stay and have their meeting. But more importantly, afterwards, have the kids come back to, to the group and have them explain what they did while you were having your meeting. Uh, get them interested in, in service. 
Uh, it has worked in other clubs that I know in North Carolina, uh, one of them being my son's club. And their kids look forward to those meetings. So um, right now, there's really not a, a big initiative about it as far as any type of waiver on dues or uh, entrance fees. Uh, the other thing is that they're looking at branch clubs. And that's the other way of uh, getting Lions or Young Lions involved is have them uh, form a branch club to a, an established club and uh, work that out until either they can uh, get enough members to start on their own or maybe just stay as a branch club for a while. I don't know if uh, Lion Larry, if you have any other words of wisdom for that. I can add one, one other thing. I, I, on the board, I sit on the membership development committee and one of the things that we have been focusing on, we happen to have a uh, Leo Lyon as a board appointee as part of our committee. Leo Lyons in uh, the multiple district 14 is not a big uh, program, but I think it's something we really ought to look at. I'm not sure who asked the question. We asked the question basically about college age uh, students or college age members. You know, if we have Lyons who are Leos or Leos, who I'm sorry, who have left high school, moved on to college, what better opportunity for them to become a lion than become a Leo lion in a club? Uh, a lot of them are moving on to uh, jobs who are looking for ways that they can provide service. A lot of employers today are saying, hey, uh, you know, we would like you to go out and serve the community. So a Leo lion program in Pennsylvania could be an extremely important thing. Other states and other countries, it's uh, working very, very well. Something for us to focus on here, though. Hope that answers the question, or at least gives us uh, some insight about it. Yeah, we have a we have a there are I'm the president of our club, and our population is aging. I mean, we had three members die in the last year, and trying to recruit in the twenty somethings has been very difficult. And a lot of it comes from the members that are there going, oh, you don't want the younger kids. Well, we do, but I was just trying to find out if Lions International overall was working on any kind of initiative geared towards getting those 20 somethings in. Um, they're too old to be Leos. Right. But they're not, you know, they're not ingrained in, in service the way that my generation grew up being. Not too old to be well, well, you know, maybe the thing to look at is maybe start a branch club uh, that is parallel to your own club there and, and get a group of them together to see if they would can establish a club. Yeah, don't you have to have 20 members to start a branch? No, nope. no. Nope. Yeah. You can have two members to, you can have one person start a branch club. Okay. But I mean, I would suggest looking at the, the branch club idea and uh, get the younger group to... Uh, Kind of work side by side with the Lions to learn about it. And then maybe together you could either uh, form another club that way or have the younger ones join the older ones once uh, everybody's comfortable with it. Thank you. One of the things we did, uh, we had a Leo advisor who was a Lion and we asked if we could get a list of Leos <clears throat> from past years and we went back four years and invited those Leos in our area to a meeting. We had several show up. One of them had a baby in a carrier and set it on a table during the meeting, which was all right. Uh, we didn't have them join, but it's an idea if you have an active Leo club in your community or contact, you may want to consider uh, <laughs> Whether you can get a hold of the names, I don't know. Privacy things have become a problem. Yep. But the other thing is maybe a yearbook. Go back 40 years and look at the yearbook and see how many are still in your area. <laughs> Invite them to uh, either start a club or come to a club meeting. Just looking at possible contacts for younger people and when they might be in the... We went four years because we, <clears throat> excuse me, we figured they'd be out of college by then. Right. And maybe that would be a good time to invite them to a meeting. Yeah, the, the other thing would be to do is go to that group and ask them what they would feel they would like to do in the community. Yeah. Get them involved that way and then have the club follow up and uh, 
work with them and try to put that project or program together for the community and kind of come in the back door, as they say, to uh, bring them in the, as a member. <clears throat> you're looking at possible areas you can make contact with these younger people. Right. One other thing you might want to think about, and uh, Governor Gerald, you mentioned uh, you know, some of the Leo clubs. We still do have some around. Uh, I, I mentioned that Leo Lion. Remember, that's not a Leo who's in high school anymore. A Leo Lion could be up to 35 years of age. Yeah. Join the Lions Club. They pay half dues. So there's some real incentives for those folks coming out of college if they were associated with a Leo Club to keep on going. Less cost, and they can do it till they're 35. So, you know, some things to think about. Yeah. <clears throat> I might have another comment. <laughs> I usually do. The uh, thing with the uh, none attending <coughs> really uh, are uh, conscientious about having, <clears throat> excuse me, 100% attendance. <clears throat> now, with the pandemic and all these things, I'm thinking maybe we should be giving them longer opportunities to make up their meetings, you know, that they can make up a meeting and still have perfect attendance. I'm thinking maybe we ought to extend that under the circumstances. I don't know how you do that, but I would think locally clubs should even consider it. It's just yeah, odd. I think, that's, I think that could be a provision that locally you could do. I know for my club, we give you, uh, we, we we're allowed 80% uh, of in-person and then the rest of the time uh, we can make it up through fundraisers or buying raffle tickets and things on that order as well. Uh, so we, we don't go with the 100% because there are situations to where uh, for either business, health or whatever reasons, uh, people can't make every meeting. Uh, my club meets twice a month and uh, we do uh, one, we're doing them all Zoom meetings right now uh, but we're also finding out that we're getting more attendance on our Zoom meetings from our lines that have moved away, that have gone south for the winter, if you want to call it, you know, the snowbirds. Uh, but they are, are attending the meetings on a more regular <coughs> basis that way. So in the long run, it's probably benefited our club with what's going on with the Zoom meetings. Uh, I know it's not true for every club, but, you know, in our situation, it's been working out a little bit better. But I think the attendance, uh, you have to look, uh, kind of look at a, a little different today because of, of the pandemic and people not wanting to go out. In a lot of places, a lot of uh, meeting places aren't there anymore for these clubs either. So a lot of them are looking for all new meeting places to be at. So that's the other problem that you run into. But I think that uh, attendance could be handled on a per per bases, per, per lion, and not a general rule, if, if that's the, the case. Hi, D. Bob, do you have a, spe a specific project of your own that you enjoy doing that can be replicated into other clubs? Ah, uh, there's many projects out there. I, I enjoy working with the kids. Uh, working with young people. Uh, we don't necessarily have one particular one that we work with. Uh, one that I used to do a lot with our district. Uh, unfortunately, the Shriners have taken the circus out of Chicago, is that we would have the Shrine Circus and our our district would, would work a deal out with the Shriners and we would get 5,000 tickets uh, for the opening show and we would give that out to the school kids in Chicago. And then we would have the Lions would come there and we would be the ushers as well as we would give goodie bags to all the kids. And we've done that for 25 years. And then unfortunately, uh, Medina Temple, uh, the Shriners moved out, the temple's been sold and uh, we lost that. Uh, but anything to do with the kids, I enjoy doing it. I think that's the important group. <laughs> we have to cater to and uh you know i'm a kid at heart so i'll try anything once and if it hasn't killed me yet i'll try it again so <laughs> uh, i just think it's just just fun working with the kids and watching their their faces when you're doing something with them 
Um, you know, everywhere from face painting to doing a 5K walk or run. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's just being involved with the kids is, is something I enjoy doing. So do you face paint? Uh, no, I don't face paint. <laughs> I'll wear it. I'll wear it. But I do organize our uh, our summer carnival uh, for the town, and I've done that for over 15 mm -hmm. years now. So I, I guess that's uh, one of my kids' <laughs> programs. Uh, it's more fun to watch the kids come in and uh, watch what they do during the day when they have the carnival rides and, and all that, and even the older kids uh, with the beer garden and the entertainment. So. Uh, it's fun organizing that and having the people come out to enjoy. Anything else, Julie? Well, I'm Trisha. <laughs> Trisha. Uh, wait a minute, now. you can't keep Julie's changing names on the screens. Yeah, well, Julie's his wife, Trisha's his daughter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and we look alike, so and, and sound alike, so it's pretty easy to confuse us. All righty. No problem. Anything else? Any anything? Anybody? <clears throat> I mean, we can have Brenda say a few words. If yeah, Brenda, people... how do you like being a partner in service? <laughs> I get around. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, at the beginning of the um, the term, if you want to call it that, you know, we met people like. You know Larry and Susan, and it was just such a great experience. And um, Susan and I seemed to click and bond right away. We knew that you know we were going to be good friends, and um, had all these great expectations. And then the pandemic came, but um, it's really it is really a unique experience because no matter where you go, what club you're with, or district you're with, whatever state you're in. You make new friends that you have forever. And that's really, I think, the best part of being involved in Lions, even just as a regular member, is knowing that there's people all over the world that are doing the same things as you are, as your, your husband or spouse is. And we're all working for the same thing. So, you know, I love being part of this and I'm so thankful that I'm able to um, travel with Bob and help represent the uh, the world in Lions. So you did ask about um, <clears throat> what one of Bob's favorite projects is. And one of mine um, is something that our district and our state are doing right now. It's called Bags to Bed and it's for the um, take the normal plastic bags that you get from the grocery stores and you, you know, you flatten them out and fold them, cut the handles off, cut the bottoms off, and you tie them in strips um, to make, there's, there's a couple different ways. You can go on Facebook, on YouTube, whatever, just look up bags to beds and there's all different ways that you can do this, but it's a project that any age group can do. Um, at least to get the bags collected and, and tied together. And then they put them together and they make a, a large mat. And it takes about six to 700 bags to make a mat that the um, displaced people that might not have a home to call their own at the time, they can use them to keep themselves up off of the ground and you know it just kind of protects them from the weather and um, gives them something that's their own it rolls up they can carry it with them it's lightweight and it's a really really unique project that you can get a lot of people involved with at the time so something to consider especially if you have a group of people that you know just want to sit together talk and do things. We're getting together on um, Wednesday with um, about 10 members of our district. We're just going to cut the bags and start tying them together and make, um, they're called plarn, plarn rolls. And it's actually a combination of, you know, the word, it's a word play, you know, but 
it's just a, a roll of plastic yarn and they can use it to crochet or they can use it in a loom that they make to make these um, bags. So um, again, it's called Bags to Beds and it's a, it's a really good project. So thank you. Uh, thank you again though for inviting us. We, we've really enjoyed being with everybody and seeing everyone talking with them and hopefully we'll be able to meet all of you in person someday and uh, <laughs> share some more stories. So. Well, there's, what I want to do is I have uh, uh, Lion Radman <clears throat> tell you about the story of what we're doing with our plastic bags. Okay. Uh, Tricia. <clears throat> oh, um, everybody in our district knows we um, at the Williamsburg Club took a cue from one of the um, Pride Lions magazines that we get all the time from International. And we started collecting the plastic bags and we recycle them down to Trex Corporation. Yep. And when you get 500 pounds of plastic bags down to Trex, you get a free park bench. Oh. And um, they have our first load of plastic, but then they had to stop producing the benches during COVID. So we're waiting for our first bench to get here. Um, and we have another probably thousand plus of plastic to be recycled. And the nice thing with the recycling is it doesn't have to be the bags. It can be any of that soft crinkly plastic that, um, that they can actually recycle into the benches. They have on their website, they have a list of what they can take. And what we wound up getting, not realizing it at the time, and it's still there two years later, the um, greenhouse here in town wanted to redo all of their plastic sheathing on their greenhouses. That, green, that plastic sheathing is actually part of the recycling project. Oh, so, um, it's two ply, it's really heavy, and it doesn't take long to get 200, 500 pounds. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. You have, do you have a storage place for that plastic? Yeah, it's called your garage. <laughs> <laughs> in his garage and in the basement of my shop, I own my own business. So in the basement of our shop, people oh, drive God. by and they just throw the plastic down the stairwell. And then mm -hmm. we keep it stored in the basement over there. No, that, that is a good project yeah, too. Yeah, very good. Very good. Congratulations on finding that. Oh yeah, it was in the Lions magazine. Right. And I, I read it. I mean, I did try to read that, and I was like, "This is easy." And our club's yeah. older, so collecting plastic is something easy for them to do. And they've gone full force. They've got we've got a Dollar General. We've got a guy that goes once a week, and they take all of their shrink wrap and put it in a bag, and he collects that. So. It really is helping the community at large here. Very good. Are there any other questions for the people out there? <clears throat> well, we can close. Lion Brenda, I have a question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the sun catcher in the other room, is that the one you made in Jackson Hole? Um, when we made our own sun catchers? Try yeah, can you, were you able to see it hang in there? Yeah, we yes, can that see is. it right above ID, ID Bob's head. <laughs> yes, that is the one that I made in Jackson Hole. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so as partners, when, when we are, we have our off time, they normally take us to do something really fun. And when we were in Jackson Hole, we went and made sun catchers. So I just yep. had to let everybody see your sun catcher and how talented you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, you know, it was it was more fighting for the materials <laughs> than talent. Yeah. Yes, they supplied the materials. We put everything together. But yeah, that was a fun time. It so was. <laughs> hopefully, we'll get more of those soon to come. We'll see. Yeah. But as directors, partners, and service, though, we do do a lot of work also. Yeah. Well, everything not, is an educational project. Yes, it's not all just fun or just fun and games. We do work also. So. Well, I so I don't know about about you, but I know I have Brenda do all my bookings on my travel, and she also keeps track of my calendar to let me know where I'm supposed to be. 
I don't know if you do this. Uh -oh. oh, he does it all himself. Ah. He does. <laughs> I know, you know, Larry, he's a control freak. <laughs> well, I was until it got too complicated with the computer. <laughs> Bob, I Back got a to you, District Governor. To ask you. How tall are your children? How what? How tall are your children? I see the little door in back of you. Is that all the taller they are? Oh, that's a crawl space. That's, that's my dog house. <laughs> <laughs> that was next what I was going to ask you. I, I think <laughs> if there's no, no more questions, we have uh, election results. Uh, uh, huh? Election results. We have the election results right now, and I'll ask for the uh, election report from uh, Ryan, uh, well, Jason. It, it was really close. But <laughs> Gary came out with 100% of the votes. Okay. Who was in the second? What's, did anybody get more than? And there was no nominations for first vice or second vice district governor. Okay, well, congratulations, Gary. I hope now you're still one. Now you can give your acceptance, but I think you already have, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have, yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the next thing we have, and I'm trying to figure out how we can make sure you see how we do this. Do you want to give the gifts or do you want to give the that first? Uh, let's give the gifts. Give and just first. pull the numbers out. No, but they don't do it in public now. They do it and come out with it. Okay. And uh, Bob and Brenda, this is a, a gift for each one of you. No, no, no. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Back up. Back up. Back up. Very we, nice. We did we did a set of pins for the 70th for Joe. Oh, wow. Um there are only 10 sets in existence. Wow. wow. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. We really appreciate that. And for Lion Brenda. Oh wow. Oh. Thank you so much. You can, match, you can match Susan with that now. <laughs> yes, Susan has one. And then for the two of you to share. Uh oh. Oh, okay. It's a blanket. Oh, so nice. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very well enjoyed that in the evening when on her off days to watch television. <laughs> <laughs> Trisha made a blanket. Yeah, Maybe he'll even come and sit next to me and share it. <laughs> I can make him his own if you want me to. <laughs> uh, for Amos. I would like to uh, uh, let uh, in International Director Bob know that <clears throat> District 14L has made a donation of $250 to LCIF in his name. Oh, thank you. Uh, we, uh, nice. we, Very we nice. really, really appreciate that. <clears throat> and yeah. I also would like to take the time to thank, uh, on behalf of your district governor, uh, uh, they sent us some uh, nice uh, cakes uh, from, I guess, a local bakery. Oh. What is it? Um, strawberry, from, uh, strawberry Hill. Strawberry Hill. The, yeah. The loaves, we have not cut them yet. We want to show you what they look like. Uh, but, <laughs> Eat them! Yeah. We, uh, we're we're, we're, we got oh, we're going to, don't worry. I got the knife ready to go, so we're ready to go. But, uh, we like the, to wall, you. the walnut is the best. <laughs> well, I can't wait for that one. But, uh, yeah, he'll eat that one. <laughs> no, you ask your, your spouse to always help you do some things, and sometimes you get a weird look. But when I mentioned this, I don't know which one is to get them. There's about 10 different uh, yeah computers. she popped up and says send them these these are the best so and i think yesterday you said that was the best so. they were they were the best and i Very think good. and we also thank you for sending the little catalog with it because we're already <laughs> looking, which ones we're going to reorder <laughs> again that's not a that's not a local thing that was just something that, that was sent to me that i just was overwhelmed with so uh, how many, how many uh, Amos. Oh, okay. And the next presentation I have is <clears throat> a pen collection for a, uh, I, I hope, a good friend of mine. And 
Uh, he has done so much for me in the district and in the, making a directory and keep me in line. And if I, do, if I did step over, he kind of let me know it. So Amos, uh, we want to present to you the, uh, another one of the collections that are very rare. And uh, from me to you, and, and it, you, I know you can't really see it, but uh, Amos can. <clears throat> I'll drop a, it off to him tomorrow. Yeah, he'll drop, we'll get it dropped right. off to him tomorrow now. It is Thank you very much. 75th, what's that? Do you see it? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. He said, thank you very much. He appreciates it. Okay. Now we have one more for the district governor, since this is his last year and he's not allowed to do this again. We created a full set of all of his pins from both years and the state convention pin at the bottom. Wow. So you that, can hang that on the wall at your house. That's for you. Yes, thank you. Gee, thanks. And then, wow. <laughs> and there's my wife again with her comments, but that's all right. Just uh, what I needed. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're going to do our. Uh, uh, we're going to do the drawing for the prizes that we attempted. I explained to you the first ticket we dry, draw is going to be for sixth place. Down to fifth, fourth, third, second. Pull it out. And first place oh, is my ball. collection I had in my bank. In in uh, Pennsylvania here, uh, the governors usually make a bank Just and it take it to every meeting, uh, and people donate place. to it. We guaranteed five hundred dollars in the for first prize, and I will tell you, we'll explain later what what we did. And then pull the next one. Okay. Going down center. First sixth yeah, place is Robin Pittman of Walnut Lane, Everett, Pennsylvania. And we'll call her and, and tell her. And her prize huh? is fifty dollars, correct? Uh, I can't. Yeah, fifty. And that was fifty. Sixth is 50, fifth is 50, fourth is 50. Okay. So that's fifth, fourth. Do you see? Yeah, I saw that. Fifth place is Ed Peters from uh, Saxton, Saxton uh, Lions Club. And we will call him when he's won $50 also. Uh, fourth prize is $50. And it's a Nuri Lions Club. And uh, I'll, I'll mention them a little bit later because right before I do quit, I want to explain some of the things that we've done in our district that I'm real, real proud of. Uh, third prize. You got it. It's 50. Third prize is 150. Yeah. yeah. Third prize is 150. Third prize is 150. And it is the Forbes Road Lions Club. And they get hundred and fifty dollars, and that'll be all sent to them. So, second, second prize is two fifty. Is two fifty, and it's Dan Wiles. Uh, is that Wiles? Yeah, Wiles from Altoona. Wiles from Altoona on uh, Pritchard Road. Uh, first prize now is show the bank. It's behind you. It's behind you. They can see it right here. Okay. Okay. And uh, is it all in there? Five. Five sixty-seven or five seventy-six. Five. It's five hundred sixty-seven dollars, and that's from the Huntington Lions, and that'll be that that'll be sent to them, and they have the option of keeping the bank or uh, returning it. It's it's up to them, but they can take it and put it on their uh, uh, award. Place, but again, I want to thank all we the people. Oh, we That's for, yep, we have one more randomizer. What's that? Oh, we have, we have one more. Oh, okay. Because now, we had to do this as a virtual convention, and we wanted to um, encourage people to come, we have written down all of the names of everybody that is in attendance, and we're going to stick them into a random drawing to win the. A blanket that matches 
the one we gave to um, the international director. She got them done. What? No. Jason's doing it. He's now. doing it right now. He's okay. he's randomizing it fourteen times. It's on the computer. You know, there's there's so much to this, and nobody can even imagine. And I've been on. Uh, quite a few Zoom, and I just do my part. I sit there, but there's so much work behind behind these things, and and um, Is he still on? The, the whole group yes. together. Okay, we okay. have our winner, Fred McKinley. You gonna pull him up and say? We have to unmute ourselves. Oh, you can't unmute him. Fred, you're muted. Hey Fred, you're you're muted. Can you hear me? He may not be paying attention. Okay. Did oh, he? That's oh, who now he's unmuted. Let's now he's try. unmuted. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? There he yeah. is. Okay, can you hear me? Speaking out in that damn cage. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> now. <laughs> I guess I get in now into the, uh, uh, I, there's so many people that uh, are, are involved with helping this year go by and, and not listing them in any order, but the top guy is the trading pin chairman. He's also the district uh, um, administrator. He's uh, He does so much for every single buddy. Uh, let me go down through here and I'll name them as we go. Well, you got um, John Harker, first place. No, John Harker. Oh, oh, never mind. Immediate past district governor, past district governor, John Harker. First vice district governor in newly elected district governor elect would be Gary Shetter. Uh, uh, cabinet uh, secretary and treasurer and is. Denny cabinet Hall secretary. and yeah, cabinet secretary and cabinet treasurer. No, cabinet no. treasurer. Let, let me let me finish it. Secretary Denny Hall, cabinet treasurer Dave Smith. Thank Global you. leader coordinator is past district governor your friend McKin McKinley, who just won the blanket. Global membership coordinator, past district governor Anna Clark. Global service coordinator is past district governor Emma Shatner. NAMI person, uh, chairman is past district governor, Anna Clark. Region one zone chair is Lion Zone A, uh, Lion Patty Mental. And region one zone B is Trisha Radman. Region two zone A is Judy Markle, along with Judy Markle in, in zone A, uh, uh, district governor elect uh, Gary Shedder. And zone region three, zone A, Chairman Lion Hunter Corbin. Uh, region four, zone A is Vern Bollinger, who who helps out with everybody. And I gotta tell you, and then region five, zone A is Dennis Irvin. Convention chairman is Lion Jason Radman, Lion Brad Wingart. District Administrator is Amos Shatner. District Chaplain is Murray Late. Long Range Planning is pay, Past International Director Lagrand Purse, the third parliamentarian. PID Lagrand Purse, the third. Informational uh, Technology uh, Chairperson is uh, again Lion Larry uh, Jason. Uh, Radman, policy chairman is past district governor Gerald Chairman, LCI chairperson, and who has done a super job, uh, Lion Jason Radman, uh, leader dog chairman is Lion Mary Car Camberg, and public relations chairman is past district governor Amos Shatner, and again, trading pin chairman Amos Shatner. Peace Poster Chairman, Janet Mills, Leo Chairman and Club Advisor, Past District Governor Gerald Chapman, Hearing is Past District Governor D. Height, 
diabetes chairperson is Lion Trisha Rasmond. Childhood cancer uh, chairperson is Lion Trisha Radman. And the White King person at the beginning of the year, we've lost this man in his uh, web height. And we want to thank those people for staying on. COVID came and kind of slowed all of us down. Um, a few highlights that I want to talk about. Um, I got them written here somewhere. What did I do there? Okay. The leader dog, like you heard me mention about Mary uh, Camber, she came up with something very interesting this year. They had to foster a dog for her leader dog. And she put on this drive that if the club donated $500, they would, they could uh, foster, foster a dog. And she gave them their choice of which dog they wanted. And after the club picked the dog, they went ahead and gave them a miniature stuffed animal representing the dog. Great ideas, great involvement. And you'd be surprised how many people really got involved and in, in, went along with it. Like Sue. Like Sue. Is right, and uh, um, some of the things that we did is that uh, and I got really involved with was the help to the uh, uh, different uh, states that got hit by the disasters. Uh, early in the year, early in my year, the uh, Louisiana really got hit with the floods and the devastation down there. And District 14L got together and along with every other club, uh, every other district in Pennsylvania, and we started collecting items that we could send down. And it started the whole state. And when we got finished, we almost had a full long trailer full of stuff that we sent down. Uh, stuff I never thought about. The most common thing was tarps. Uh, 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 sanitary items, uh, everything, blankets and pillows and uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste. And I mean, just went on and on and on. Then after we sent that one down to Louisiana, uh, our disaster uh, chairman went down there and he worked down there, I think for three weeks. And when he came back, uh, we were still collecting money. So we actually sent the cash to them so we can go into next year's disaster fund or whichever comes whatever one they need um I, the people just kept sending and sending and sending and again when you're a, a district governor there's things that happen that you will never forget and after that um the disaster uh, chairman uh, went ahead and we got contacted with we like some hand sanitizers or some uh, face masks. Well, we contacted them back and we got they donated to us, um, uh, I think, a uh, hundred boxes of hand sanitizer. And they were the personal hand sanitizer that came in a tube and you could take them. And it was uh, 16, no, 12 in a box. And so we passed them out to try to do as many clubs as I could and gave them. And then we got to open up the masks. Well, to our surprise, they sent goggles. And it was uh, kind of a, there was a lot of joking around about it. But after we got it and came back, well, what are we going to do with these goggles? Well, we found out state police wanted them. Uh, local municipalities wanted them. Uh, classrooms wanted them because when the kids are little kids, they can get disposable glasses. And uh, when they're painting or they're doing something and get in their eye, they they use them. So we have pretty much got, I think I have one box left, but uh, it, it's stuff like that that really goes on. And we, we try to remember the lions help all the victims. And that is what we tried to do. And that's what I tried to do in our town these this uh, capital of Pennsylvania Harrisburg contacted our church and I'm a Catholic church in Williamsburg and they wanted to know if we would help 
deliver food to the needy people throughout the town and the county and do what we can do. Well, we have a real small church. Uh, our pastor passed away, not passed away, but he passed, uh, left us. And he's, they transferred him somewhere else. We're a real small town, a real small church. So we've been carrying on his traditions by, uh, we, uh, we always call him the rental priest because he comes down every weekend and that. So we knew that we couldn't handle it ourselves. So we contacted the, uh, the pastor at the Methodist church <clears throat> and he has taken it on. And I do the, ch I do the Catholic church. He does the, uh, two other churches. And we have another, we have every religion covered. And this morning <clears throat> at nine 30, we received 325 pound boxes of food in the food of onions, potatoes, uh, yogurt, uh, cheese, uh, everything you, you really need. So uh, my granddaughter and I delivered the, <clears throat> the uh, 30 some boxes and got those sent out. And it's just that type of stuff that we delivered to a new person today that had three kids and the kids come running down this thing, picked up these boxes and the, the girl probably was three years old. She was determined to carry the box up, but the smiles and the warm feeling you're getting in your heart when you're doing this is, is well worth it. So I am getting the sign of saying, <laughs> cut it off. So is there anything else that needs to be covered today? I'm gonna to have to, well, they're, all of them are looking at me now here, <clears throat> but um, International Director Bob, really wanna thank you for accepting our invitation down here. And you will have uh, another gift coming up. I'm just going to put everything in a box and mail it up to you. So we appreciate your commitment, Larry, your commitment. And I, I just want to say, I want to thank everybody for supporting me uh, through, through my year and my term. And we're here to support Gary. And we're asking you very, very much to support your new incoming governor Gary and for the people that don't know him, you will know him by his end of his term. Give him your help, give him your your you know anything you could help him out with. Uh, other than that, I, I guess we'll we'll call this meeting to an end. Benediction. Yeah, we'll call this meeting to an end with a benediction from our uh, lion pastor Matt Roberts. Thank you everybody for, for joining in and I hope I did all right. We'll find out. We'll go ahead with the benediction. We're keying it up and it'll be with you in a second. Come on. There it is. Please join me for the benediction for the Lions of the International District 14 Let us pray. Let's pray to Heavenly Father, let us not lose sight of our vision as Lions. May we forever serve others in your name. May our hearts and our actions be filled with kindness. Let us surround ourselves with those who are on the same mission serve others. Let us go forth with rejuvenation and let us find new ways to serve our communities, our state, our country, and our world. Let us unite the world with kindness as kindness matters to all. Father, we ask for a hedge of protection over all lions members worldwide as we go forth and serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This meeting is uh, hereby adjourned. Thank you everyone that participated and made it, I think, fairly, fairly good meeting. If anybody uh, has a, any comments, just make sure they get their last chance. 
Okay, if anybody has any comments. Make sure they have a last chance to say something uh, for you. you. You have a last chance to say anything you want. We'll still be open for a few minutes. So that's it. I'd just like to say there. thank you again. And uh, best of luck to everybody as, you, as we finish this year of Lions. And the best to you next year. Open the black so it's a pointer and then bring it down where it says mute. We're unmuted. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See you in Atlanta.